Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast Podcast, brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast, and we've got play of props here on a Wednesday. Two games in the NBA playoffs as we roll along here in the postseason. Definitely want to make sure to subscribe to that page. Check out the Best Bets video that we also have up for you as we're bringing you both these episodes each and every day now moving forward throughout these postseason uh, we also want you to head to thelines.com. Use the Prop Finder tool up there to make sure that you're getting the best odds from all of these books that are giving you bets this NBA postseason. Being feeling pretty hot here. Monday, Tuesday night, some good nights here, uh, especially in the play of Prop 7-1 and one overall in these last couple nights here. Let's keep it rolling, baby, and uh, find some good bets in here, Nate. Yeah, I'm going to go with Harden over 21.5 points, and it's been bet up uh, to 22.5 some spots. I mean, I was able to to bet this as soon as it came up on like Monday morning um, because of the way we saw Harden finish on Sunday, um, just completely taking over that game, taking, taking control of the offense after Paul George started hot, but then, he, I mean, he was just fading away. And I, t- I talk about how this series is all about identifying the matchup you want. And with, with no Kawhi, Harden is free to just be on the ball, dribble around and find the guy he wants to attack. And I mean, he was cooking, down the stretch in game four, uh, shot 70% on his drives. And in game one, I mean, I'm just looking at the two games without Kawhi because, as I mentioned, like Kawhi just like clunked up this offense and made it disgusting. And Harden still managed to go about 21-plus points, right? I mean, with, with this horrible offense that the Clippers threw out there for games two and three. But from game one to four, his pass rate dropped from 67% to 21%. On drives, it's because Maxi Kleba was playing a lot of five, and there was absolutely no resistance once he got into the lane. He's able to finish. I mean, Harden he he excels when he's able to be on the ball longer, when he's just able to to pound it out right and and get into the flow of the game. And I mean, in these two games, he's had the first and second most seconds per touch, uh, only behind Jalen Brunson in one of those two nights. You know, so he's just like absolutely on the ball in a rhythm and I know we we worry about James Harden in a game six or seven just fading into oblivion I I think he's he's starting to answer some of those criticisms and and you know just be like look it's it, I I can still perform in the playoffs he, he's he's had some notable collapses but he in general has has put up his numbers when given the opportunity it's just that we remember him most recently with with the the Embiid centric offense right and Kawhi is the Embiid to to uh, this situation, and he's out. Paul George will fit in alongside Harden. Harden is is basically the alpha, is what I'm saying, as far as this offense. He's going to create everything. He's going to be on the ball. And interested in some of these specials for Kyrie and him to combine for 50, although I think the odds are better if you take them both to go like 20, 25 plus or Harden to go 20 and Kyrie to go 25 plus. Mm-hmm is better odds than saying they combined for 50. So I trust both of them to continue scoring. I mean, Kyrie has just been lights out. Luca's starting to get hobbled a little bit and, and Kyrie outscored him on a, on a much more efficient basis, 0.5 points per touch basically in game four. So I trust him to, to continue to attack the, the lack of rim protection for the Clippers. Yeah, man, I, I I'm hyper, hyper confident that you can get better juice for other ways to play those two dudes getting points than the anytime a book is like here's a thing that we made up for you i'm like what you are the you you are i'm betting against you why would i take this bet that you're like look how good it is like i know there's times where you can you can play it out you can see the odds and if it's worth it then you grab it but you're completely right to do your due diligence in in making sure that like you do if you do this manually am i going to get better odds and the answer is oftentimes at the very worst they're going to be slightly better to be honest than what this like special would offer you but um sometimes you know sometimes you find a, a diamond in the rough i think james harden points is a good bet tonight i'm i'm totally off uh, of assists at this point you even get plus money to go under his seven and a half which is right about what he's doing seven seven eight assists is usually what you're going to find him at he had five in the first half last game uh and then didn't get an assist in the second half and that's in part because like everything is just now your turn my turn with he and paul George and to be honest like Paul George was hitting some bonkers shots in that game he got hot early he hit his he saw his first to go in and then from there it was just like he, he shot all these shots that you're like no 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 oh okay cool it went in because Paul George is unconscious today uh but I don't want to have to bank on him being unconscious all the time like that to be honest and by the way James Harden game six not so bad. J- 
James Harden game seven, uh, stay away. I'm not going over that one. So we're, we're still at a good spot at five here. But um, let me go back to Derek White. I'm just going to take him points and assist. I do like a little SGP with his points uh, reduced as well as Drew Holiday's. That's a, a bet I gave out in the best bets video. But I think the points and assist for Derek White is something I can just go back to. I think Drew is also a good bet for points and assist, to be honest. They're, they're both so similar, but Derek White's just been on one. And I'm just going to continue to believe in him being on one, to be honest. And obviously the 38 point game, notwithstanding, he's still been going over his like 12 and a half, 13 and a half point prop very consistently this series uh, in every game. In fact, we had 13 in one of them, but uh, now we're up to 16 and a half on the points and only four and a half on the assist. I, I think the assist for plus money might be a good little sprinkle as well, because it's like plus 116 for him to get five dimes. And he does dime up a bit more without Chris Dapps. Now, the thing that I, I don't want to rely on too heavily I think it's still supporting evidence here, but I don't know that it's the reason. It's like with Chris Stapps out in the regular season, the offense and the rotations was a lot more Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum split minute. Like their minutes are a little bit more staggered in the regular season. They're not quite the same anymore. There's still a little bit of staggering where it's like, okay, they start together. One of them comes out, the other one comes back, and then they finish the half uh, on the on the floor together. And that's r- rinse, recycle, repeat for the, the second half for, for JB and JT. And the reason that's so important to me is because when it's just Derek White and one of the Jays on the floor, now we're talking about Derek White being a top two option, a top two ball handler, a lot more plays called where he's the pick and roll ball handler with a guy like Jalen or Jason. Uh, and now you're talking about a little bit more dependency that you can depend on him getting touches more, being a little bit more uh, primarily involved. So like, I still think that's going to happen. Just maybe not to the, ex- I don't want to like just throw that out there and be like, this is a lock because of that uh, in any way. Plus we don't use the L word on this show, um, but it is a, still a, a good bet with Chris Stapps out because of his involvement. Plus the assists now are a little bit more of like, there's not pick and pop with J- Jason Tatum as much. It's pick and pop where uh, um, Derek White is the dude. And you're going to get a lot of spot up shots. So it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm waffling a little bit here. I still love the bet because of, of uh, Chris Stapps being out and Derek White being able to get to what, what I believe to be like 18 ish points by himself with, without the assist in, in general, to be honest. So I think you add like two to three assists for him and you're good to go. Like I was saying, the dimes for him, the potential assists go up to about nine and a half, 10 without Chris Stapps on the season. Because like I said, now he's running a lot more of that pick and roll and stuff like that. And the assists are going to be a little bit easier against Miami because they are a little bit better at guarding the pick and roll ball handler uh, and limiting that person's points, but not the, the spot up off of the pick and roll action where now that you've got guys on the, uh, you got shooters on the wings and stuff like that, that are now very available. And there's going to be a lot of threes going up in this game, which you mentioned in best bets, talking about the the total of this uh, Boston and Miami game. And I would, could not agree more, uh, which means that not only is that going to mean that uh, there's going to be good three looks for, for Derek White, I think he's also going to be the recipient of the ball on the end of like the rotation of the ball. And now he's going to be able to drive into the lane as well, uh, especially if he can get Bam, keep Bam on the three point line. So just really like Derek White to get 21 PA tonight. Yeah, we all love Derek White. Uh, Executive of the year, Brad Stevens. Remember, let's just remember, traded Romeo Langford and Josh Richardson for this guy. And then a a late first round pick and a pick swap five years down the road. That is why he's the executive of the year. The man, Derek White, who Lionel Messi, I like, was at game four. And and, and people were like, he left left the arena thinking Derek White runs the association. He's just like the best player (laughs) in the league. He's just dunking on the heat, hitting everything he put up. I mean, we were, we've been saying all season, like he might be the Celtics most important player. He's not their best player, but as far as everything he does on both ends, like he is just such a vital piece of this team and, and such a different playoff player than what we saw from him last year. I'm sticking with the Clippers here for the second pick and, and trying to exploit the usage uh, dump without Kawhi officially out for the second game. I mean, Norm Powell, you had 11 and a half points rebounds last game and he had 11 points and zero and zero. And uh, I mean, he should have had more points because the 13% usage, I think maybe was Ty Lue being like, look, PG has it going tonight. Like we, we don't need Norm as much. I don't think PG is going to be as good. Definitely not from jump. Uh, Like you got to run some more stuff for Norman Powell. He's going to have to soak up some of that second unit usage. And we saw last year when Kawhi left that Phoenix series, Powell had a 26 and a half percent usage average 28 points per game in the final three of that series. He's, I mean, he's a really good catch and shoot shooter in this series. He's shooting 50% on catch and shoots. And I think the fact that PG and Harden were so good last game means like he's going to get more of those opportunities. The Mavs are going to send help and and they're going to collapse in the paint when Harden blows by his man. Cause apparently he can still do that. Uh, there's also some room for positive regression on pull-ups. Norm shot 37% at home 
in, in on the season and only 29% the first two of this series. Without Kawhi on the season, 14 points a game, two and a half threes at 40%. Uh, I guess I didn't say exactly what I'm betting on here. I mean, his point... His points prop is is eleven and a half, so I'm taking that, and then I'm also taking him to hit two threes, and then you're at plus money, plus one fifteen. I just don't think he's really going to be getting you twelve points without hitting threes. And I mean, he's incredibly consistent as far as like being a forty percent three point shooter uh, at elevated volume. I think here he's he's scored fifteen plus in five straight regular season matchups with Dallas when he's played at least twenty minutes uh, and hit. Two and a half threes at 52%. So I, I think the quality of the looks and his ability to generate offense for a team that really needs other sources beyond these two guys makes him a, a good bet here. Yeah. Come on, Storm and Norm. I agree. Um, and and like, yeah, he, he should have more. I think the threes is always a good look right now for for Norm because of uh, the the pace and space that's going to be there. There's a lot a lot less in and out with with Kawhi off the floor. There's a lot more just pass it around the perimeter and find the shot. PG was unconscious, like we were saying. Like, I, I, it, I it would be very very surprising to see that two games in a row in the playoffs from playoff P. But um, either way, like Norm should be someone stepping up a bit. Uh, Amir Coffey has been damn near unplayable on offense. He's not helping out with the boards, even though he starts in place of Kawhi. Uh, he's got a short leash and is not even getting 20 minutes without Kawhi. So he's just the sort of pseudo starter. And then you get, you know, the, the actual rotation in there. Um, I don't, I just, I hope play, Norm plays a bit more. I, I think the, the threes is, is my favorite part of this bet, but you got plus 115 with that little SGP for Norm. So I'm with it. Um, and I'm going to go to a bet that might seem a little stinky, but I mean, Luke Cornette's going to get in there. Uh, so we're going to take Luke Cornette over three and a half boards. The man is a rebound machine uh, and his hands are always up. Coach loves Luke Cornette because his hands are always high and near the rib. I swear to God, that dude just runs around with his hands in the air, uh, whether he's trying to like, you know, block a shot or get a rebound, like hands high and then you're going to good things are going to happen, including getting four rebounds in three and point three minutes in this last game. Um, and there's a couple of things here. Now, one, this might could very well be a blowout. I don't think any of us would be shocked. It's a 14 and a half point spread as is. And if you do dumb down um, the, 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 and filter down the, the stats for um, Norm, for Luke Cornette on the season, um, if they win by 10 points, he's getting more minutes, uh, obviously. Like he and it's he and Hauser uh, and Pritchard are going to be on the floor in the fourth quarter of, during the regular season. And even now, when this when this stuff gets out of control, now it's going to have to be like a 20 to 25 point lead in the fourth with like five minutes left before I think Missoula is like, okay, cool. Now I can pull my guys um, and probably needs to be a little bit less than five minutes. I don't think he's going to take any chances with the Miami Heat. Like you, they need to be fully dead before you walk away from their body. <laughs> like you can't just assume that they're dead. So they are going to get that it's not as relevant but it's just something to keep in mind that he does go up in stats when they this team blows other teams out but as far as the rebounds go like why do you think he's going to be in the game the only moment in time i could see him going like the reason that i see him going in for about 10 to 12 minutes in this game uh is going to be like during normal time without any kind of blowout stuff going on is is going to be because they need maybe some rebounding help um and i don't know that they'll need it but he'll be that dude coming in and, and al is going to be pulling uh, Papa Al is going to be pulling Bam Adebayo from the basket on offense. Um, and then on defense, like, yeah, he's going to be a good rebounder, but I mean, can, can you give Al 38 minutes that consistently? Like, I think you want to at least get him out there, get, get Luke Cornett out there for like, you know, spurts of like two to three minutes at a time where I expect him to be picking up one to two boards in those spurts, to be honest, each time. So um, if you look at his rebounding rate and like the amount, like his, his rebounding um, per, uh, percentage at, at when he's on the floor, it's like he's getting a ton of rebound chances in like, like I said, in like three and a half minutes, he had like six rebound chances. That's just, he's just running baseline to baseline um, and, and standing down and out of the way in the dunker spot but they're just moving the ball around three-point line and being like all right you got the offensive board if you can get it uh, a couple of those offensive uh, a couple of those rebound chances last game were from uh were from offensive rebound chances um and like i said without kp on the season this isn't super transferable but at least you know that the minutes go up a little bit and i still think he'll be helpful in this game i mean on the season they go up a lot he's at 21 and a half points he's at about five and a half boards per game or 21 and a half minutes five and a half boards per game without Chris Stapps. Maybe you cut that in half, but I still think you get this to uh, to the rebounds being something that he's going to do really well against a Miami Heat team that doesn't have Hawkes. Like he's just going to be so much bigger than everybody on the court that I think he'll be good for the four boards in like roughly 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, a Heat team that hasn't gotten to 90 points now in consecutive games. So that's why he's okay. able to grab rebounds in such limited time. Uh, I mean, this is why we're reluctant to take Horford or to put like full units on it because he's like you just don't know what buttons Missoula is going to press. And you don't really expect Al Horford right. to play like 36 minutes at his age. Like 
especially now they know Porzingis is probably out for the next round or two. Like you're going to need to save Horford. Mm. Maybe he's going to be in there against the Knicks, just like getting a black and blue Eastern conference final series or Embiid, you know, I, I mean, so yeah, or Giannis, like, right. They, they got to play the long game here. They got to mix up his minutes. I think we might have a Xavier Tillman sighting here in the playoffs for the Celtics, but like you said, yeah, if if it's a laugher, um, like Cornette and Pritchard are going to be out there finishing this game, and you're definitely going to cruise over this. Uh, could be a a night, and rather than taking the Celtics minus 14 and a half to like parlay Cornette and Pritchard uh, for some extra stats and just be like, fourth quarter, here we go. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I love I love the, the obscure backup um, – parlay when when you think that this game is going to get out of control and you can also live bet it that way that was what i did last game it didn't work out because pritchard went 0 for 6 but as soon as that game was about 13 points uh in favor of the celtics in the second quarter i was like this has blowout written all over it what do we do with that well pritchard was at four and a half points took six shots and he couldn't get five points because he just had a really off night but it's the same concept like i'm gonna go right back to it tonight if i see this thing out of control by the second quarter get ahead of peyton pritchard or luke Cornette or whomever knowing that like there's gonna be some shots going up for those dudes in the fourth quarter and missoula's already shown a, a tendency to bring in pritchard and other guys at the end of the first quarter or the beginning of the second quarter to give them burn in the actual legit minutes of the game almost as like practice, but also just because it's like, I don't need to play J and J that many minutes if, if we're already up 16 in the second quarter. So you might still see some time before the fourth for these dudes getting a few extra minutes because this thing's out of control very quickly, right? So uh, definitely keep that in mind for live betting as well. But that is all the time we have for you in Play of Props here. We also have Best Bets Up, as I mentioned, so make sure to subscribe to that page and continue to follow along. Until we see you next, happy betting. Happy betting.